get wrecked A pump would be nice, but remember, there's no financial advice Crypto Badgers Thanks for joining the Crypto Badgers Show Here we are for a deep dive into Everest Ticket code ID um, we are set to climb the mountain here today and find out everything there is to know about this big brained project. Um, you can also go back and take a look at our previous deep dive video on the Casper network. We've also done one on Oxbull and INX. And joining me um, on this journey to the summit is by Zdips, aka Matt. And uh, Matty, these are the ones we really like, isn't it? Where we get to go deep and uh, find out all there is to know about various projects. Yes, indeed, mate. Uh, and quite excited about this one. I think this one uh, is one that's a little under the radar for most. Yes. Uh, at the time of uh, doing this particular video, just for context, the uh, price of Bitcoin just after the flash crash earlier in the week was sitting at pretty much 47K, Ethereum at 3,500. And uh, the Everest token has been performing relatively well this week and uh, sitting at a price of around 35 cents. But Matt, before we get into all that stuff, tell us what is Everest? Okay, Maxi. Uh, I guess uh, Everest can be summarized as being an integrated global banking platform uh, that aims to bring the masses to DeFi and uh, I guess a whole lot more as well, Max. But uh, it's taken the team a little over three years to develop the platform. Uh, there's quite a lot to unpack for us here. So I think we should just get uh, stuck into it. But uh, Grab yourself a cup of tea, everyone. Subscribe yep. and like, of course. And then, course. Um, and then uh, you know, sit down and you know, enjoy, enjoy our journey. So broadly speaking, uh, the project offers users a biometric digital identity, which is linked to what is known as their Ever Wallet. So with access to both crypto and fiat accounts, including global fiat on and off ramps, users can sell, buy and trade currency stocks, crypto and have access to DeFi and importantly, cross-border remittances as well. They also have their own layer two blockchain known as Everchain plus a regulated and programmable stablecoin known as the credit token in their ecosystem. Uh, in addition, they'll be rolling out a debit card. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the timing on that, but presumably that will be a Visa debit card as Visa are listed as one of their partners. So we'll have to wait and see when that actually gets rolled out. But basically they're sort of the cornerstones of the project, but we'll expand on some of these individual aspects as we yeah. dive a bit deeper, Max, uh, into the project. But basically with Everest, it allows users to participate in a wide range of things in society, such as mass market DeFi, which I've mentioned, banking, insurance, gaming, voting, I mean, even supply chain oriented, oriented stuff. So, and really, you know, that's sort of just scratching the surface because there's a lot more to all of this. But uh, what they're aiming to do, Max, is, is make this system so damn simple that a user can, for example, um, make just a couple of clicks um, to go directly from their bank account to access, say, DeFi uh, and a suite of other products, and then just as easily send proceeds back to their bank account again. Uh, I'm talking something that is so integrated and simple that even your mum could use it. So. You know, and the transaction costs are extremely, extremely low, which is absolutely crucial uh, at the so moment. So you might obviously. be thinking out there as well at the moment. I mean, that to have that kind of integration is going to require an enormous amount of partnerships, and I think that's what makes the scale of this project so big, isn't it? That the the, the amount of work that they're doing with governments and banks around the world, you know, they're they're not um, they're shooting very high. They certainly are. I mean, it's 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 breathtaking, really, in its scope. This project, but uh, let's um, let's sort of look to break things down a little bit in terms of the the main sort of components of their product suite. I mean, you know, the cornerstone of everything. Uh, we we really need to begin with Ever ID, which is the base product or, or as I mentioned, cornerstone of their overall solution. I mean, fundamentally, um, the Ever ID is a person's digital ID including their name, their address, and other sort of credentials, which are encrypted on the blockchain and stored in the Ever Wallet. So the system is set up to be very private, which is great. Um, so only the, the minimum level of data is being shared with any institution or, or jurisdiction, um, depending on the nature of the transaction that a user might make. So it's very minimalistic in this respect. So there's sort of the privacy side of it, 
Um, but you know, there's also the legal side of it. So things need to be kept uh, legal and above board. So it is important that, you know, the minimal information is shared with those entities to ensure things are indeed legal. Um, so you've got the Ever Wallet. Um, you might want to, I don't know, would you be able to, have you got your wallet there, Max, that perhaps we can get uh, up yeah. on, on the screen? So this is the, obviously this is the desktop version. Um, so the Ever Wallet, um, I mean, it's got a, a number of different components to it. Um, I mean, basically, it's got its own built-in decentralized exchange. So users can buy and sell tokens directly through, I think it's Uniswap at the moment. Uniswap, you can buy and sell stuff through there. Uh, and in the future, they'll be linking up with other DEXs um, as well to offer like a sort of like a DEX price aggregator service. And that wouldn't be, as I understand it, that wouldn't be dissimilar to what, say, a, a one inch currently offer. You know, sort of, sort of where, you, where it's sort of searching out all the different DEXs to get you the best price to buy and sell. Also within the wallet is the staking function. And we love staking coins, Max. We we, we absolutely love them. And uh, yeah. the rewards that you can get for, for staking uh, your Everest tokens are very, very lucrative. lucrative. You can stake uh, for 12 months and earn a 40% APY. You can stake for three months and earn a 25% APY. Or even just a day, you're going to earn a 5% APY. Um, APY and there's actually a great um, YouTube tutorial on YouTube uh, for staking and swapping within their wallet. So instead of going through examples of all of that right here, I think what we'll do is just leave a uh, a link in the description to that particular video because that that's really concise and uh, easy for everyone to follow. But as we mentioned, um, this you know what we're on here is the the desktop version. Um, however, they've recently launched their Android application, and that's going to allow users in Europe to access both fiat on, on and off ramps. So that's a, a big innovation for them. Um, also their iOS version will be released soon I'm told, but I don't know exactly how soon. But uh, one of the things I love with um, Everest and the, and the Ever, uh, you know, the Ever Wallet um, Max is that, you know, even if you lose your phone or your laptop or whatever, you know, like you're going to be fine because the system uses facial biometrics. So, you know, if you lose your device, it's just simply a case of, um, you know, reinstalling uh, the wallet on another application, um, using your facial recognition, and then you're kind of good to go again. And I know they're looking at adding other sort of biometric features as well to this, such as fingerprinting. So that's, uh, that's something of interest. And what I particularly like the sound of, Max, is they're, they're, they're looking at a, a thing called, I think they've termed it their social recovery system. And basically what that means is like, everyone worries like, I'm a user, what if I die? What if I become incapacitated? Um, you know, how's my family gonna be able to access my wallet, my tokens, my life? Um, so what, what I believe they're looking into is this thing, this social uh, recovery system whereby you can actually split up your um, your keys. So, you know, for example, Max, uh, I could give you, you know, part of my keys, I could give my wife, father, whatever. So in the event that I were to say die or become incapacitated in some way, um, you know, they can sort of, you know, com combine, they can they can get access to the account. So hopefully they do roll that feature out because I think it's it's one that's, that's really, really needed. Um, so that's sort of the, the, the main sort of wallet components. Um, I mentioned uh, in the intro, Max, that um, Everest also have, have uh, their own layer two solution called Everchain. So that has the capacity, Max, it's a very high throughput um, chain. It's got the capacity to do hundreds of thousands of transactions per second for just pennies per transaction. So that's obviously something that's very, very needed in the space. So they've built out a bridge to their main net, allowing tokens to come in and out. Um, but eventually bridges will be built out to the other major chains such as Binance Smart Chain, Solana, which is obviously a very topical one at the moment, uh, and Polkadot and, and, and many others. So um, importantly though, I think, you know, from a user's point of view, um, these bridges will be completely seamless. And I think that's absolutely brilliant because users don't want to have to stuff around with this sort of stuff, Max. Yeah. I mean, they just, they, just, they just want it to work. So I think, you know, the fact that, this stuff is, uh, is is seamless, I think is is absolutely brilliant. Um, I also mentioned that they have their own stable coin and that is known as the CRDT or credit token. And this is a really, really interesting one because it allows programmable fiat regardless of the currency type that comes into the Everest system. Yeah. So I guess in a way, I, I'd probably sort of term it like a smart stable coin, Max. I mean, I, I've not heard of anything quite like it. Yeah, well, you basically you've 
you've got a way then to onboard sim completely simplify the onboard fiat process don't you so you, yeah, if i deposit if i deposit a euro for example this all this this sort of works out but it's still pegged somewhat to the us dollar yeah i mean uh it's it's quite it's a really really it's a really really interesting one. I've not I've not come across something quite like it. And interestingly enough, the the, the CODT it's actually the world's first licensed program programmable stablecoin. So when you actually combine it with the other components of the Everest ecosystem, you know it sort of facilitates you know all transactions. And the good news is it's backed one to one by fiat. So that's going to make it nice and regulatory compliant as well and we know that regulation has been a very hot topic uh in recent months max yeah. so i'm pleased to see that everest has sort of been doing things in an extremely regulated way and they've done that yeah, maybe that's one of the reasons it's taken them, or part of the reason it's taken them three years to get to where they are today is to ensure that they have the um you know that sort of regulatory compliance so they're licensed in malta um which is part of the EU and they have obtained a license which I believe is similar to the likes of crypto.com which is a obviously a very big player in the space um as I understand it there's only about eight of these licenses that have been issued in the world so it's kind of a big deal that uh, Everest has been able to to obtain one of these um and they've done Malta's quite a, they've done quite a lot of work too with various governments in particular yeah, to kind of test Indonesia um, I believe um, Australia as well and Papua New Guinea Am I wrong there? Um, yeah, I heard something there in dispatches. I think yeah. they've done some some sort of um, proofing in Indonesia, um, yeah. rolling out some um, some stuff there. So, and I think it's is it Bank of Kina, I think uh, Indonesia. But I'm not sure if they're Indonesian or not. But I know they're working with some yeah. banks as well. But I like the fact that they're you know they've gone that compliant route, that regulatory route, Max. Um, you know they they've got full adherence to like the financial action ta task force stuff, the guidelines for that, and obviously as as mentioned the MFSA authorization as well for their their programmable stablecoin. So they're really well placed, from what I can see, you know, in terms of regulation. And look, whether we like it or not, Max, that is the way things are going. Yeah. Right. It's just it just you just can't get around it. But um, yeah, you mentioned earlier um, with respect to partnerships because you know it's all well and good to. To build all this stuff out but you've, partnerships are absolutely crucial um and if we we look at the uh the list of everest partners it's it's shaping to be extremely impressive already so you know their partners include Aave and polygon and ftx ocean protocol kyber network we've got visa there on the screen as well um oracle which is a absolute giant of a company and Chainlink and, and obviously some others there as well, but they're, they're all pretty huge names, Max. Yep. Um, they did launch on Kyber, didn't they, back in the day? Yeah, they did. The day, yeah, which was, yeah. It was actually, it was slightly messy, but um, you know, it didn't really matter too much or affect oh, things. It wasn't too bad. Um, um, you know, but really it's also the uh, the team. And I know that we, you know, we converse in uh, over message in, in Bob we trust. In Bob, um, we trust. We love Bob. Bob, we love Bob, and I think uh, we'll leave a video below to this. Some great memes with Bob. As he, well. um, he's got a he's got a very particular sort of manner, uh, Bob, and he's you can just tell he's super passionate about this project, uh, and he you get this. He get, he's someone who gives me um, a lot of confidence overall, and I mean obviously the experience that he's got as well. Um, but he's formerly the, the general manager of BitTorrent. Um, yeah. and he certainly there's there's links with Ethereum um, to him as well. Yes. Um, Brad Witteman is a, a co-founder and chief of product for the organisation. Um, they seem to have both worked together at BitTorrent, um, and they've also got uh, Lisa Horowitz a couple of days ago. I don't. Think yeah, I don't think I don't think yeah, she's that fresh. I don't think she's got a photo on me. Yet. She's uh, to be to be added. Um, she was a former Cardano marketing lead, so it's great to see that they're starting to think about that sort of, because that's probably been where they've been very focused on getting the work done more so probably than the marketing, you would say, or creating hype. They haven't really been interested in doing that. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, which is, which Lisa's, a, Lisa's yeah. a great hire, so um, to, yeah. get, to be attracting top talent like that is fantastic. Um, and I know also, this one's always interesting to me, Aya Miyaguchi, who's... Um, an executive director at the Ethereum Foundation, so and, and a and, former uh, president of Estonia. Yes, indeed. Uh, plus, at, at Sushi um, Tara, uh, he's also um, from the Ethereum Foundation as well. So they kind of line up pretty nicely, don't they? 
So and the ex ex president of Estonia, giddy yeah. up. That's not a bad get. Yeah, because Estonia get. are quite a forward thinking crypto country, I believe. Um, they are Eastern indeed. Europe, they, there's um. There's plenty of games. So they've got plenty of heavy hitters there. I think it's, it looks a good team. Um, and, and they're going to need it, aren't they? Because they've, they've got these very lofty goals of, you know, we always hear about the kind of with crypto banking the unbanked, but you kind of feel like these guys are really trying to ta take it on and do that. Yeah, indeed. And I think this team's got immense contact. So, yeah, it's, it's, it, I'm really, really looking forward to what they can, they can, they can all combined bring to the table. I think it's an exceptional team. Um, now, everyone obviously always wants to know about the token because ultimately that's where people are going to be investing in and holding as part of this yes. project. Um, what do you make of the, the token utility? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, there's, there's, there's a couple of different facets. I mean, firstly, the ID token actually gives institutions and indeed the general public access to the network depending on the level of services that they need and i think it's worthwhile compartmentalizing here i mean um you know obviously say a bank who's got like millions and millions of customers they're going to need to buy a, buy and stake a far larger amount of id tokens than say you know um joe blogs who just wants to send a handful of remittances around a year so it really does depend on the the scale of of the of the individual or the organization that are that are looking to on board so um yeah i mean basically having having to buy and stake those tokens i think is a is a great utility because it obviously locks away a, a hell of a lot of the supply i also understand that um, there's sort of a governance aspect as well to the token i believe that part of their treasury has actually been allocated for community governance so that the community will actually have an opportunity moving forward to actually see or, or, or vote on how uh you know some of that treasury is actually going to be spent um and in addition to that obviously we mentioned earlier you know another utility of the token is the staking aspect. we still don't know how long that staking is going to go for do we i mean we don't well they're still pool, well they're still through, offering through, up to 12 next months year. Yeah, I mean, they're still offering up to 12 months um, at, at a 40% APY. So, I mean, that's, you know, for the time being, um, yeah, it's a, that, that's a good option or or even the three-month option at a 25% APY is quite uh, attractive as well. And just a final utility with it um, as well, Max, um, there are trading fee discounts available for ID token holders as well. So I think from memory, there's sort of three tiers. I think there's a silver, gold and a platinum level I'm not sure if that's on that screen. It might be there. You go. Yeah. So depending on how much you you basically hold and stake, um, you know, you basically can access different um, different fees. In the case of their debit card, it looks as though that's available only to those holding over 50k ID tokens. But whether or not that gets uh, moderated in time, who knows? But uh, what's 50k ID tokens at the moment, Max? It's about 15 uh, grand's worth. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, roughly. So yeah, so we'll see how that sort of. So there's quite a lot of utility there, I think, uh, with the tokens. So yeah, hopefully they can onboard some of those massive institutions who have to buy lots of ID tokens and stake them for a long time. That yep. would be that would be lovely. Um, so and the, um, and the and the pricing of which um, you know this has been a because as we've mentioned we've been in this since day dot. Um, yeah, we, we we bought the ICO max. Yes, uh, not the ICO. We bought the they had the oh, ICO pre way back. There was an ICO Sorry, done way back in 2017 for it, wasn't there? I believe. So holders. I'm not sure. Was, was what we bought yeah. the ICO the pre sale? Uh, I can't it was remember. a pre sale. It was a they did it. They did a pre sale um, right before listing. Uh, that was in March, right? That yeah, was in March. Right. And um, I've got a feeling we paid about 15 cents. Yeah, the ICO price was around seven cents. Uh, that was back in 2017. So it was a long. Yeah. You had to wait. 20, long time between drinks. 2018. There's a long wait for those investors to see um, that actually get listed. Um, now, as we were doing our research for this, of course, it, we were thinking, geez, this has been getting very tempting in price, but um, to kind of restack a few more. But in the last couple of days, while we've been looking at this, um, you know, it has started to, to make a bit of a move north because um, yeah. it's felt suspiciously quiet on the um, price front for the last really quite a while now isn't it um since yeah. that big run up so talking through last three or four months well i mean it, it's um 
yeah, it, I mean, it, it, I think it ran, I think it might have been in April, it ran to nearly $2. It ran to like $1.98 or something like that. So it had a, a really good pump there. And obviously with the broader market going backwards in May and June, it, you know, it's, it obviously struggled to sort of maintain that. And it's it's had a nice big dump. But sort of since then, it's sort of found a bit of a bottom. I think it got down to around 18, 20 cents at nice. one stage. 14 and a half cents. Jeez, I, oh, geez, I wish I had have seen that and loaded up on that, seriously. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the last couple of days it has had, I think it was 23 or 24 cents the other day. I think it's pumped back up now. What is it? 36 cents. Yeah. Um, but still, I think if you consider the fact that it went to $1.98, I mean, what's the market cap sitting on it, Max? Um, 40, 43 mil, pretty much. So so you've only got 116,000 of the, 116 million, sorry, of the tokens actually in circulating supply. So there's still quite a lot of tokens to come onto the market. But I mean, they are, as you can see from the graphic, and if you sort of you know tune in on that, I mean um, these these other tokens are going to take several years to actually um, get realised onto the market. So, and I think there's a, a really important point, um, a bit of an update on this graphic, I guess you'd say, is uh, you know I think it's important to mention that the team and the seed investors uh, recently agreed to defer some tokens that they had due to unlock in August. Um, so they've de deferred that unlock for at least one more year, Max. So I think that's a damn good sign. And it really does show like an unwavering commitment from the team and early supporters of the project, you know, like, so as far as I'm concerned, it's very rare you see that happen. So, yeah. you know, so hats really hats off to them for, for, for doing that because it's really shown the community that they're, their team and their, their early investors are right behind this and, and they're confident in the future. Yep, and obviously a huge number of tokens allocated towards towards staking. So yes, providing you are in there staking your coins away, uh, the the inflation of the you know that does mitigate against the inflation of the token somewhat. As yeah. you should be increasing your position um, over time. So um, so we we mentioned the the, the the circulating supply there market max of 116 million coins. So that gives us a 42 million dollar market cap. So what does that sort of extrapolates out fully diluted to maybe a, you know what a couple hundred million, something like that? Yeah, probably um, looking at uh, that more like ten uh, percent, more like two point four. Uh, yeah, two fifty. Yeah, something like that. But really, for for what these guys are doing, the partnerships they have, I think. You know, at the current pricing, this is this is looking very attractive. I'm just a bit annoyed with myself. I didn't buy more the other day when it dropped down to that 23, 24 cent level. I'm sort of wary of buying it right now because it's just had two big days where it's gone from like 23, 24 cents, you know, up to, yeah. you know, up to where it is now. So maybe maybe it'll cool a little bit. You never know. It might just head off to head off to the races. But uh, and obviously the the broader, you know, how the broader crypto market performs in you know the coming days and weeks will. You know, sort of also have an impact, but I think you know, given that it was a dollar ninety eight, I mean, yeah, it does look rather good and at I these sort of price just, levels. I mean, just look at everything that we've spoken about and what they're doing. I mean, and to an extent, it's obviously a lot of this is going to be determined by what they're able to kind of deliver. It's not all going to happen at once. Um, no. It is something that's going to happen over time. Um, but I think I distinctly remember when you first mentioned this token that you 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 made a reference. I think to um, having owning Lend and Aave in particular, um, yes. but you felt this one as a beast of a project, as perhaps something like Aave and Lend would have seemed back in the day, and just to be patient on it. And, yeah. Um, because this one, like you mentioned, with a fully diluted market cap of two forty million, if and this is all. How often do you say this in crypto? If these guys can deliver, you know, on the promise. It's going a lot higher than two forty million fully diluted. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you mentioned Arve there. I mean, obviously Everest is a different project, but back in the day, and I'm going back what two thousand seventeen ish. Um, you know, I, I did buy the token Lend, which was which was which actually became or turned into to Arve, and I thought I'd done pretty well on it, selling a selling a three or four by pump. Um, but obviously, the rest is history. I mean, back then, even with a ten to one dilution, when Lend became Arve, uh, I think that was the price would have been sitting back then at around a dollar. And obviously, Arve is now three or four hundred dollars. I do get, I do get Arve vibes with Everest. Um, as you mentioned, they've still got to do a hell of a lot. But you know, I think the thing is, Max. I mean, 
I just sort of in attempting to wrap all this up because we've really only scratched the surface with this today. You can actually go onto their website. There's so many papers on there and stuff you can look through. I mean, it really is all encompassing. But one of the things, you know, I particularly like in projects, Max, is like if they've got products or services that I want to use myself. And I, I really think that Everest falls into that category for me. Um, you know, especially when they get their, I mean, I'm an Apple guy, so especially when they get their, their iOS application launched and and it happens to be available in my jurisdiction, I'm I'm definitely going to use this myself. I mean, you know, just it's 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 perfect for me. Um, but you know, this thing really could be a, a proper giant in the making. I mean, it could it could really do anything if they can you know, can achieve anywhere near their stated goals. So. Um, I mentioned the scale and scope of what they're building is is pretty pretty breathtaking. So, yeah, and and they're all done with regulation in mind, I think. So, uh, and yeah, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. You'd say with what they're doing, and, and forgive me for uh, going. You know, sometimes we try on this YouTube channel not to be um, too hypey because no. uh, there is a lot of that. There's a lot of moon boys out there on YouTube. And, We're not um, moon boys, and you know we've we want to share our losses as much as with you as much as our wins and. Certainly, in the case of Everest, whilst um, you know we didn't sell at a dollar ninety and watch the price fall right back to fifteen cents, so we've we've not played this perfectly by any means. But I think I, I did sell out my uh, I did get my initial outlay max out at about eighty cents. Yeah, we did, that. Cents. we did that. So but we, 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 we did take but we didn't sell it. We didn't sell at two bucks. Um, no negative. So. You know, we didn't get it right, and we're not always going to get it right. But I mean, if, uh, if the potential is there for a, a top twenty here, I think. I I definitely think there is. Um, yeah, I mean, if they can achieve eighty percent of their stated goals, even um, there's a very good chance at some stage in the future this could be a top 20, 20 project. And look, I like the community as well that surrounds the project. And sometimes we talk about that, Max. And it is important to have a really strong, solid um, sort of community. And actually, the community is sometimes referred to as Sherpas, which I, I actually very much like the, yeah. the term given the Everest name. But um, you know, the community seems pretty strong. Um, and I don't think there's, I don't think there's a ridiculous amount of eyes on this project at the moment. So yeah. hence, I, I sort of see a bit of a an opportunity, I th but I think, I think as I they th make more announcements and noise, I think that might change. I think the one thing probably to just bear in mind in terms of risks and things that reasons that might, this might not work. I mean, it, they've had probably you'd say a few problems and delays with things so far. Um, I know, for example, when I think it was their beta app was about to launch for the wallet, you know, and as is quite normal and often the case in crypto, that was quite <laughs> hyped up. And then, of course, it, you know, it well, wasn't on time. With software in general, it's very, yeah, very hard it, to stick it didn't, to time. It didn't come out on time. The community got a bit upset with that. Then I think when they first um, released the wallet, like it was quite buggy, um, which, which is, again, normal. It's a beta or alpha wallet, it was. Um, and there, there have been, I know you had a few issues at one point with the biometric stuff in terms of the photo um, and getting all that done because I've had no problems, but... I know you had a few. Maybe maybe my head just got a bit fatter, Max. <laughs> <laughs> so you know they have been. You know they're still early days, and they're still um, they're still utilizing technology that I think they're still to an extent testing and um, pushing improving. the boundaries on and and improving upon. So I don't necessarily think this is one. I mean, look, anything can happen. It's not necessarily one that's going to get away from us very very quickly. Um, I think it's certainly one that we're looking to in the longer term, it'd be fair to say. Yeah, I think you're spot on. Um, look, I'm currently holding it. I'm not planning on selling it anytime soon. I should have bought the dip the other day. I'm really dirty in myself that I didn't. But if I get another chance in that low 20s area, um, you know, as, as per my namesake, I will be buying Z dip. Um, <laughs> I just missed it the other day. I was busy sort of doing some stuff with some other tokens and I just missed it. Missed it wick down to those levels, but I'm keeping a pretty close eye on it now. Um, but look, you know, at the end of the day, we're holding it. We're looking to add, uh, you know, more to our portfolio uh, with Everest. But that's certainly not to say that our listeners should be rushing out and, um, and and buying this token. I mean, I think what we'll do is we'll leave some some links and um, some research material in the description. Um, and if any of our listeners do want to learn more about Everest, they can go ahead and uh, look through those uh, those uh, links and do their own 
due diligence and research. But it's certainly, from my perspective, Max, I think this is a bit of a sleeper and I think it's a gem. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, well, that is, uh, we went, maybe it's not so much a deep dive. That is our climb, our hike up the mountain of Everest. Um, do tell us what you think in the uh, comments below, what you think of the Everest project. You can also get in touch with us on Twitter and in our Telegram group, um, which we'll leave links to below. But um, I think, Matt, that pretty much sums up the mighty Everest. And, yes, uh, indeed. Yeah, we, uh, we'll be back. Who knows what we'll be diving into, your, our snouts into in the near future, the crypto <laughs> badges. But uh, I think in closing, uh, we'll let, as we always do, uh, on the Crypto Badger Show, let uh, 50 Cent take us out with our official theme song. So until just next time. On, just on that, Max, uh, I've had our people uh, contact uh, Kanye's people. Um, so hopefully we can come to a bit of an arrangement there where uh, he can take us out on the, uh, the next show. Brilliant. I love it. Uh, <laughs> sign him up. Sign him up and get him on to Everest at the same time. Done. <laughs> All right. That's a wrap. Good day to finish on. Thank you, Matt. And we'll be back very shortly on the Crypto Badgers. Sir, coming live from the crypto world, bringing you all that you need. Let's go. This is the YouTube crypto show with two guys who are kind of in the know. Crypto badges are here, so you're in the clear. No worry or fear, yeah, we're helping you steer. Shouts to the team, we can't forget Max Power and Bazi Dips. Don't get wrecked, a pump would be nice, but remember, there's no financial advice. Crypto badges.